Okay, things have been crazy recently with Pokemon and Nintendo copyright takedowns. I was going to do a video about this because a Pokemon lawyer talking about fan projects getting shut down, that's huge. And then Relic Castle got taken down, and now we got all kinds of crazy stuff to talk about. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, share with your friends, comment your thoughts down below. What's Relic Castle? Because I never heard of it. Doesn't seem like a lot of people heard of it, but then they go down and go viral with 1.4 million views, tons of support, and of course, Game Freak, bad, Nintendo, and Pokemon suck. Also, these weirdos had me blocked. So yeah, let's, let's see what they have to say. Dear Pokemon fan game community, already starting by trying to get sympathy, even though it's just ROM hacks and stolen assets. All right. It is with a heavy heart I announced that Relic Castle website has been taken down following a DMCA takedown notice. Relic Castle has always been a non-profit, ad-free, tight-knit community, and we pride ourselves in what we have achieved. Members have felt at home, made friends, and even careers with us. And that's just like another thing from like all these projects and all these things that get taken down, like the deflection. You got a DMCA takedown notice, it was deserved. So Relic Castle was a forum and repository for ROM hacks and unofficial Pokemon games. So it's like trying to garner the sympathy. It's like, yeah, but you got taken down. So none of this matters. None of this contributes to the argument. All you're trying to do is get people upset at Game Freak when you got rightfully taken down. It is with deep regret that I have to inform you that the forum part of this community, which has turned 10 years old this year, has had to come to an end. Who cares about the members and the posts? Relic Castle was home to many of us. Discord server's not going anywhere, and the site is still visible as an archive using the Wayback Machine. Also doesn't seem smart that if you get a takedown from Nintendo or the Pokemon company, and you just tell them, yeah, but you could still access all of the content that was taken down with the Wayback Machine and our Discord server, it just shows no respect. And that's also like a whole thing about ROM hacks and why I've always been against them. There's no respect. And then thank you for being with us, but I'm just like, yo, Nintendo only stacking W's. Yuzu was taken down. They're also going after mods. And I'm down with all of this, where it's just like, yeah, a stupid copyright infringing mod that content creators were using just to profit off of should be taken down. Now, people are like, but it was seven years old, so why would they take it down? Who cares? You always have to defend your copyright. And I feel like after the greedy play from that one like scumbag YouTuber that was trying to paywall the Pokemon Pal World mod, and then Nintendo obviously shut that down. Like now they have to go after everything, and they should have been doing it from the beginning. I've always been confused on like how, despite the reputation of Nintendo and Pokemon taking down things nonstop, how timid they are with actually like taking down things that shouldn't exist because of IP violations. So Nintendo shutting down emulators, shutting down hosts of Pokemon ROM hacks and other just like stupid hacks and mods. I'm down with all of that. And that brings us to this article. Ex-Pokemon lawyer says press attention is the worst thing on earth for fan-made projects. Bro, this is actually like crazy and kind of huge because we haven't really gotten insight of the workings of like Pokemon Company and takedowns. And I'm really surprised that more former employees of like Nintendo and Pokemon haven't come out and given us some tea, even like anonymously. This dude just gives his name. So he talks about what he's allowed to talk about. And it took this long to like understand how Pokemon projects get taken down. So it's like really cool insight. So over the last two decades, fan-made video games have become a common site online. Aspiring developers set out to create something different than what the real teams are making. Some of these projects end up getting a lot of media attention. Unfortunately, that attention is often a double-edged sword. In an interview, former Pokemon company General Counsel was asked about fan projects and how they end up being discovered. He revealed that he often found out about these games thanks to news articles on various websites. And that's always been the craziest thing to me because like kids are finding a lot of this content and ROM hacks and like YouTube videos and stuff. But then it takes so long for such a slow response from the actual companies and the lawyers to eventually take these things out. Like, bro, you can just hire like one or two people that just sit on like a YouTube algorithm and just go like, eh, maybe we'll let that go. Oh, wait, this person just like straight up hacking, take it down. And then like 
follow Twitter and just see like social media and what they're saying about like the up and coming fan project or sites like Relic Castle that need to be taken down. It like that that's my biggest issue. It's like no, they ne there needs to be more takedowns. There needs to be more respect for the developers. I'm still baffled that Nintendo doesn't take down the channels that every time there's a new Pokemon game leak, they pirate the game and then upload like the entire story and playthrough and hacked content before the game comes out and then they don't get like copyright strike and just have their channel terminated even though it absolutely should be. Now like some streams and some videos get taken down but there's like millions of subscriber prevalent channels that just don't have action taken against them. Same thing for just like the direct re-upload of Pokemon trailers, even though that violates like the Pokemon and Nintendo content policy. All you have to do is search new Pokemon trailer after a Pokemon trailer drops, click on the ones that are like two minutes long or the exact length of the trailer, and then take them down because you can quickly find out there's no commentary and it's just straight up theft. It's like so much theft and stupidity and hacks have gone on for so long, so it's like, yeah, I'm happy to see the Nintendo's finally taking action. Maybe the Power World thing did it, maybe the Yuzu thing did it, maybe they were trying to like build up some big legal case and now it's just like, yo, burn it all to the ground, who cares? I don't know, but we're getting some insight. So short answer, thanks to you folks. I'd be sitting in my office, minding my own business, someone from the company would send me a link to a news article or I stumble across it myself. I teach entertainment law at the University of Washington and say this to my students. The worst thing on earth is when you're fan project gets pressed. I like that he puts it in quotation marks because that's when it's like, yeah, the, a lot of fan projects aren't fan projects. They're stealing assets, they're actual ROM hacks, and they have enough infringement that could get problematic. So the worst thing that can happen is when a fan project gets pressed because now I know about you, even though I feel like it shouldn't be hard for Nintendo lawyers to know about everything, but all right. Why fan made games really get taken down? While he seemed mortified by the idea he might have played some role in getting these games taken down, it's actually not that surprising. Fans on social media have argued for years that the attention from gaming media was the problem. However, he went on to stress that media attention alone isn't enough to result in a takedown. The big problem is when developers begin collecting money. But that's not the end of the equation. You don't send a takedown right away. You wait and see if they get funded kickstarter or similar now we also see with like yuzu and patreon if they get funded that's when you engage no one likes suing fans so that's like another interesting angle because like yeah it isn't a good look when the company destroys every fan project every artist but i feel like the pokemon community as a whole has abused that privilege and it's also more than just like collecting money being the problem because this article comes out, and then days later, we see Relic Castle getting taken down despite being non-profit. And from what I could see, they didn't have, like, a Patreon or any monetization. or just, like, a forum to host, all of that. So it seems like the curating and encouragement of ROM hacks on a large community scale could also create a problem, which also makes sense. And I also feel like it's not a good idea to antagonize copyright holders because... A reason why I don't like ROM hacks and what the Pokemon community has become about that is because there's so much disrespect towards the main games. It's all, Game Freak is bad, Game Freak sucks, they can't make Pokemon games anymore, Nintendo's evil, Pokemon has billions of dollars and doesn't respect their fans, despite the Nintendo Switch being like the strongest generation console for good Pokemon games except for Pokemon Legends. We have Let's Go, second best Pokemon game, Sword and Shield with DLC, incredible. Nothing wrong with Brilliant Diamond, Shine, Pearl, except they did screw over the secret bases. But people just like, ew, art style Pokemon, let's go. Game Freak sucks, regardless of how good the game is. Like the most shallow stuff possible. Same thing in Brilliant Diamond, Shine, Pearl. Ew, chibis. Even though all of the like original 2D sprite art and like th those older games are chibi looking because of the limitations. So they bring that to 3D as a nostalgic thing. And then this toxic, hateful community just gets mad at it for no reason. And then, like, same thing with Scarlet and Violet. Nintendo Switch was objectively underpowered when it released. So getting an open-world Pokemon game on the Nintendo Switch, actually impressive. And then tons of quality of life, and it's a great Pokemon game. But then, like, all the hate, and then you just see, like, all of these ROM hacks, all of these mods and stuff. It's like, yeah, when you start having, like, that much disrespect for towards the developer while abusing their IP, also not a good thing. And then, like, there's weird things to where, like, Shady Penguin had to choose between his casting job or being able to get hired by the Pokemon company and then doing ROM hacks and content like that. But then we don't see takedowns. 
even though the Pokemon company is against it. So we got some weird stuff and then ex Pokemon lawyer. And now it looks like it's changed for like Nintendo and Pokemon just like start taking down everything community. They abuse the privilege. It really seems like no one is making an honest passion project in Pokemon anymore. They either feel entitled to monetization for their work, even though they're using someone else's IP or they're doing it out of spite towards the Pokemon company and game freak. And it's been that way for about a decade which again is why i was always against it so yeah we got some weird stuff going on and again we don't have the entire story so like yeah i want that i want that anonymous leaker from nintendo or pokemon that's kind of like talking about yo these are the extra do's and don'ts that we have and we're, we're launching an offensive so the comments about funding echo sega when it comes to fan games 2021 sonic the hedgehog social media manager stated that sega is mostly fine with sonic appearing in fan games and sees it as a way for aspiring creators to hone your art and development skills which is crazy because sega over a decade ago you know 2010 2011 they were the ogs of just terminating youtube channels for playing their games and stuff so they've come around nintendo has done some like weird stuff with their copyright policies and stuff and now it's like as long as you have commentary and you're doing and you're not just like directly stealing content you can make videos about nintendo product which is fine which is cool and we also have other gaming companies support this because yeah if you make a nice honest respectful passion project that's just cool for everyone and then you can even get hired from it potentially so she also noted as long as no profit is involved so that's where things start to get legally murky Fan-made games have become a fascinating part of the video game industry because sometimes they result in developers moving on to bigger and better things. Notably, this person started his journey as a video game developer by making Sonic fan games and then got hired to make Sonic Mania. There's a lot the industry can learn from fan games, but the second money gets involved, creators shouldn't be surprised to see their passion project fall apart. And then there's some extra things going on with it. So yeah, like interesting and kind of crazy story. But I really do think that the Pokemon community has become too toxic, hateful, and entitled to really deserve any kind of leniency when it comes to IP usage with the Pokemon company, especially because, like, all the new projects, all the hacking and cheating, it's to spite the developers, and that needs to be, like, taken down massively. I think it's just a win for everyone, because then, like, you're left with people that respect and play your games, so that's going to create a better community, and then you get rid of all the bad actors. So I'm, ha I'm happy to see this action from Nintendo. But I've even been against other things like Nuzlocke. It's like stupid and unproductive. Like just play the game. And I was right about that. Because we see like Pokemon challenges being evil. And encouraging kids to lie, cheat, and steal. That there's not even respect for Nuzlocke anymore. That everything has to be hacked, cheated, and modified when it comes to any kind of Pokemon content. And I, I really hope that, like, all of that has been more identified by Nintendo and the Pokemon Company. It's like, yo, we gotta take action. We're seeing actual, like, cheating, getting disqualified in Pokemon. Not enough action, though. But stuff like this does give me hope. Let's see more takedowns. Let's start seeing bans in Pokemon. And then maybe Pokemon will be salvageable. Because I've been talking about just, like, the community ruining it, hacks and everything ruining it for so many years. Now, Power World actually being a threat. Let's see some action being taken. That's kind of, like, the funny thing. All these takedowns and stuff, all this lawyer talk. How world's still up. And then the community was toxic about it. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.